Well, good morning, everybody, and welcome to Faith Fellowship Sunday School. We're still in the Gospel of Luke, but I'm going to do something a little different today. I'm going to just focus on a few scriptures today instead of um, trying to tackle an entire chapter, because there are some points that I want to make from these particular verses in Luke 5 that we'll look at. First of all, a little different today than in times past, uh, I'm going to give this message a title and I'm going to call it a fish story because it really focuses on some a very significant time in Peter's life and how the Lord uses him and the scriptures here to teach many lessons. I think something we could all learn from. So turn to Luke chapter 5 and we're going to start reading from there in verse 1. But I think if I were to have a takeaway for you, and I'll give it to you up front, and that takeaway would be the same, I think, as it was for Peter. What will you do with the word of God in your life? When the Lord speaks to you, what will you do? Because it's going to come down to a moment where everything stops or start, starts based on what Peter does with the instruction that Jesus gives him. And you'll see that unless he moves, unless he responds to Jesus, it's going to be one of those moments that maybe would be well forgotten or never written about. But because he responds, and the same should be true for you and me, when we do, things happen. So Luke chapter 5, starting in verse 1, it says, one day, Jesus, as Jesus was standing by the lake of Gennesaret, the people were crowding around him and listening to the word of God. Now, Gennesaret, uh, Luke calls it Gennesaret. Uh, there are other names for this same lake or this same sea. And you've heard them all probably, but you may not have known they were all speaking of the same lake. One of the names for the Sea of Galilee is Gennesaret. Another name is Kinnereth. Another one is the Sea of Galilee. And a fourth, the Sea of Tiberias, who was Caesar at the time of Jesus' life. So many times you'll read the Gospels and you'll hear it referred to as Gennesaret, Kinnereth, Sea of Galilee, um, the Sea of Tiberias. And all of them are one and the same. It just has these different names. So I thought I would give that to you as just something to ponder or something to add to your collections of Bible knowledge. So it says, he saw at the water's edge two boats. He left there, left there by the fishermen. Jesus saw two boats who were washing their nets. He got into one of the boats, the one belonging to Simon and asked him to put out a little from the shore. Then he sat down and taught the people from the boat. So the crowds were so many that Jesus and a major part of his ministry took place around the Sea of Galilee. So there are numerous stories. In fact, in Matthew chapter four, we have a part of this story in, in John chapter one and in Mark chapter one. So in Luke's account, he adds a little more flavor to it they are not all one and the same. They just all talk about the calling of Simon, Peter, and James and John and Andrew. So if you read these accounts, you might think there are contradictions, but the reality is I believe they met Jesus or spent time with him on numerous occasions. So this is just one of those. And there are really no, con there are no contradictions, I should say. So now Jesus has pushed out to sea. He's in the boat. He's preaching, teaching to the people. And it says, when he had finished speaking, he said to Simon, put out into deep water and let down the nets for a catch. Now remember, and this is what I think is important and something for us or one of the points that I want us to ponder. Now, if you're Simon Peter, you're a fisherman. This is what you do. This is what you know. And so now Jesus, great preacher, great man of God, none like him in all generations. And so, but he's also the son of a carpenter and or earthly son of a carpenter. So he tells Peter 
to push out into the deep in your boat. Now, if you're Peter, being the fisherman that you are, professional that you are, you're thinking, maybe, and I'll give you a reason why I say some of these things later, is that, man, what do you really know about fishing? I know you're, you're the Messiah, you're the Lord, but what do you know about fishing? So anyway, Peter responds, and it says, Simon answered, Master, we've worked hard all night and haven't caught anything. Another, in other words, he's saying, you know what, we've done this, and we kind of know what we're doing. Now, of course, that's not in the text, but I'm just kind of giving you a picture of, you know, humanity, how we are sometimes. Um, we feel like we are knowledgeable, know what we're doing, and good at what we do, and sometimes we are hard to persuade to do something beyond what we want or what we think is best. But after all, He's talking to Jesus, the Son of God, the Messiah, the King of Kings, and the Lord of Lords. But he still says, we've been at this all night. And so sometimes I believe we question God, uh, and Peter's no different. So as he's doing this, don't isolate Peter as if he's some unusual guy who questions the Lord. After all, he's the Lord. But I think you've done it too, and I know that I certainly have. So as Peter's story is unfolding, just kind of keep those things in mind. Then it says, but because you say so, I will let down the nets. You know, if it were up to me, I wouldn't do it. I've been working at this all day and all night. And actually, Jesus, I know what I'm doing. But because it's you, I'm going to go ahead on and let them down. I mean, okay. I mean, it's you speaking after all. Okay, I'll do it. Then it says, When they had done so, they caught a large number of fish, such a large number of fish that their nets began to break. What was happening in this moment is Everything that they knew, believed, thought, expected was shattered in this one moment because they listened to the Lord. Listening to the Lord is something, it's a part of the calling on our lives. He's our leader. His word is a lamp for our feet and a light for our path. But sometimes we want to do it our way. There are occasions when we believe that we know better. Of course, we would never say it, but our actions speak so loudly, we don't need to say it. Peter had already spoken that, you know what? I've been doing this all night and um, I kind of know what I'm doing. But because you say so, I'll do it. Once they did it, and this is important, nothing happens if he does not throw or cast that net into the lake. Nothing happens. So there's always this point in life for all of us when we're at a crossroad, when we really feel like the Lord is leading us to do something or God is sharing something with us or compelling us to do something and we're at that crossroad. And when we're there, this juncture or this fork in the road means a response is required. And a non-answer is a response or not doing what we feel the Lord is asking us to do or we're being prompted in our hearts to do or by the word of the Lord. Not responding is an answer which really says, I'm not going to do it. And it's at that point that we can sometimes walk away believing what we did was best, or maybe that was just a result of something you ate. But what you don't know, and if you don't respond or obey, what you don't know is what could have happened. What could have happened in that moment? And because that moment passes, 
We may never know unless the Lord brings us to that juncture once again. But nothing happens until Peter, Simon Peter, makes the decision, I will cast the net into the lake. I believe that some of you listening right now are probably at a crossroad where the Lord has been speaking to you, giving you instruction, telling you it's time to change something, it's time to begin something, it's time to end something, it's time to go in a different direction. And because of who you are, your knowledge, or how you feel you're experienced, and, and you just feel like you know best, it's at that moment where a miracle could happen or not. For Peter, for Simon Peter in this moment, everything depends on whether or not he casts his net into the lake. And so he does, which now the story begins to take on monumental proportions. And I believe the same would be true for you and for me if we obey the word of the Lord. The word of the Lord, if we obey, it could change everything. And we're probably living lives that are full of the unknown. What do I mean by that? Full of the unknown, meaning there are things that could have happened or could be different right now in our lives had we cast the net into the lake. Because at that juncture, is that at that moment, is when the miracle is ready to happen. It's ready. You're there. The Lord's there. The Lord's giving you the instruction. It's at that moment that this miracle could take place. Whether it did or not, for some of us, in some occasions, we may never know. But one thing we should all do today is when we feel, believe, sense, just are overwhelmed with what we believe is a moment that the Lord is speaking to us. Take a, take a step of faith. Maybe we should all take a leap and see what happens. It might be that moment in time where your life is about to change, transition, or something monumental is about to take place. There are many junctures when we feel prompted by the Lord. And I believe for all of us, if we're gonna be honest, we let some of those moments pass. Simon Peter, he cast his net into the lake. Let's finish. It says, so they signal, let me read verse six again. When they had done so, they caught such a large number of fish that their nets began to break. In other words, this was huge. It was not ordinary, an ordinary catch. It was an extraordinary catch because those nets were probably built to hold quite a few fish and they were well taken care of as the story unfolds. These men took care of their nets. They cleaned them, they took care of them. But this was not an ordinary catch. It was in fact extraordinary. Why? Because it was the word of the Lord to them. God spoke to them and told them exactly what to do and their nets were not really capable of handling all that God had in store. So what do you do next? When you realize the, the catch is bigger than you can handle, well, you call your friends, which is what they're about to do. The other fishermen are about to partake of this miracle of God. And sometimes what God wants to do, or many times what God wants to do in our lives is more than just for us. The moment is bigger than you, bigger than me. It has monumental implications, but we'll never know unless we obey God. We'll never know. And as I said before, there are probably miracles that are left behind. Hopefully, the moment will come again. Let's continue to read. It says, so they signaled their partners in the other boat to come and help them. And they came and filled both boats so full that they began to sink. What a fish story, right? And so now the miracle is bigger than the nets. It's bigger than Simon Peter and his crew. 
it's bigger than the other boats that came along and it's bigger than the boats themselves because it's about to cause them to sink. This is really a fish story and it's important. It's one that I believe God wants us to walk away with today that he's able to do above and beyond anything that we could ever ask, think, or imagine. But there is a very important ingredient in seeing moments like these, and it's called obedience, the love language of God, obedience. If you love me, obey my teaching. Keep my commands. Love, that's his love language, obedience the love language of the Lord. So let's continue. When Simon Peter saw this, he fell at Jesus' knees and said, I'll stop right there. When he saw this, when this was happening, uh, something happened on the inside of Peter and it's about to come out of his mouth. And we're gonna just kind of perhaps um, entertain a little conjecture here or think about some of the things that Peter could have done or thought. Remember, Jesus is the Son of God. He knew Peter's thoughts. He knew everything that was going on in Peter's mind. And let's just kind of fill in the blanks a little just for grins and giggles, okay? Let's do that. So it says, when Simon Peter saw this, he fell at Jesus' knees and said, Go away from me, Lord. I am a sinful man. I believe, and remember, we're just adding, you know, some thoughts to what we're reading here. Not calling them fact, just adding some thoughts. I believe that Peter was probably thinking things like this. Man, you know, you're a great preacher, Jesus. And just... You're awesome, but I'm a fisherman. This is what I do. I know what I'm doing. And you know what? At this time of day, fish are not to be caught further out right now. And I'm just adding this. And so, you know, and besides, your dad was a carpenter. That's what, that's what you know. I, would I come along and try to tell you how to do carpentry? Um, and so, all right, since you say so, Lord, I'll go. Peter probably realized or recognized that the Lord knew every thought that went through his mind. And he just fell at his knees in repentance. Because, I mean, after all, after this miracle, what couldn't Jesus do? What couldn't he know? And Peter probably said, basically, I'm sorry for what I was thinking. I'm sorry for the things that, you know, Lord, it wasn't right, I'm sorry. And he fell at his knees and he said, go away from me. You, I'm a sinful man. You, you, you are holy and I don't know, I just can't do this. You're, you're just, you're holy and I'm a sinful guy. And I understand those sentiments, and I believe you do as well. But the story goes on. He says, For he and all of his companions were astonished at the catch of fish they had taken. And so were James and John, the sons of Zebedee, Simon's partners. Then Jesus said to Simon, Don't be afraid. I believe what Jesus is saying yeah, you probably could be or should be afraid after what you were thinking and what you were, the thoughts, the meditations of your heart. But Jesus spoke to the scriptures doesn't say he was afraid. It says he humbled himself and it says that he said, go away from me. I'm a sinful man. It doesn't say that he's afraid, but Jesus says, don't be afraid. And remember, um, when we're talking about Jesus, there is nothing that's impossible for him. 
And remember last week I told you, sometimes it's important to look at the scriptures through what are the eyes of Jesus. Because his responses and the things that he says and does, it really reveals the truth and the reality of the moment. When, whenever Jesus speaks, it's fact. It is settled for all time. It's reality. And so Jesus said, don't be afraid, which Peter was probably, no, he was afraid. That's why Jesus said that. And that was Jesus' instruction to him. Peter, don't be afraid. Don't. He, would, he could say the same to you and to me. Don't be afraid. I'm in this boat with you. I am the Lord. I'll never leave you nor forsake you. Don't be afraid of anything. Don't be afraid of anybody. I am with you, which he will give them that instruction, instruction in the... Um, when he closes with the Great Commission, I'll always be with you, even until the end of the age. So don't be afraid. Because fear is a very powerful emotion. And what it does, it handcuffs us sometimes of the things that God wants to do in our lives. A leap of faith means the situation is out of your hands or out of your ability. And the, what you're doing is responding by the word of the Lord and therefore it's not something you're in control of anymore. And so Peter just, okay, my intellect, Peter says, or would say, tells me this is a useless endeavor to throw my net out into the sea. But because you say so, I'm going to do it. And so this is a leap of faith. It passes or surpasses our intellect. It's, a, it's something you do simply based on the word of God. And that's where Peter was. He was at that crossroad, that juncture. And maybe you're there now, been there before, or about to be there. And a leap of faith means you're not in control. You're simply being obedient to the word of God. And fear is a very strong emotion. It handcuffs people all the time. And fear has to do with a lot of different things. Your own inabilities. I'm afraid because I'm not smart enough. I'm not good enough. I, other people are better at it. Uh, are you sure? Me? Me, Lord? Me? We've had those feelings before. And Jesus said, don't be afraid. Don't be afraid. And Peter did what the Lord commanded him to do. And it was a monumental moment, not just for him, but for all of them around him. The call on your life is bigger than you. It's bigger than me. The call on Peter's life that day was bigger than the moment. It was going to impact him and those around him. And it was going to change their lives forever. We're reading about them today, over 2,000 years ago when this occurred. We're reading about them today. This was a monumental moment. And so it says, Then Jesus said to Simon, Don't be afraid. From now on, you will fish for people, or you will become a fisher of men. All that you've learned about fishing, all the experience, the knowledge, the background, all that you know, I'm about to use it, but I'm going to change the bait and I'm going to give you a different catch and it's going to be people. You see how many fish you caught this day? These are merely fish but what you're going to really become is a fisher of men meaning you're going to lead many to me Christ says the Lord Peter's life was about to change this is a fish story his life was going to change forever and so this is a monumental moment in moments like these I think that we should all stop and ponder questions like these. Lord, is there more 
of my life that you want of me than I'm giving? Lord, have I limited myself to my own intellect, my own capabilities, and my own human ability? All I ever do is operate by my fleshly thoughts, ideas, beliefs. Lord, are you asking me today to step out further than I've stepped? Lord, is there more to me than I realize? These are some of the questions that could be a takeaway from a story like this. When you read it, as you've read it many times, I'm sure, it's one of those stories that you could read and gloss over and, you know, just go on to the next point. But you remember it, you kind of get an idea of what it's about and you just keep reading. Well, I read that story before, it's kind of what we do. But I believe on this occasion, the Lord wanted me to emphasize some things that maybe we've missed in times past, is that he wants to use your life, that there is more to you than you realize. And yes, perhaps you have been operating simply by your own dictates or your own intellect and abilities. And God saying to you, there's more to you than you've accomplished. There's more that he has for you than you've received and walked in. And so I'm going to take that away from this story for myself today. This fish story today, I'm going to take some things from my own life and apply them. And one of them will be, Lord, the next time I really sense you uh, moving me to do something that's beyond my Oh, Lord, comfort zone or be above and beyond my uh, place that I'm willing to go. Help me. Give me the strength to throw my net in and see what happens. Give me the strength to cast my net. And Lord, let me see what else you are wanting to do in my life. And Father, if nothing else, I'll walk away with this. At least I did what I thought the Lord wanted me to do in that moment. Remember, sometimes we're simply seed planters. If you plant a seed, you'd have to stand there a long time to watch it grow. But if you plant it, then the other elements involved will cause it to blossom. So sometimes you're planting a seed. So don't think that everything you do or every act of obedience leads to instantaneous gratification. Sometimes all you really need to do is plant the seed. Let's complete the story. It says in verse 11, so they pull their boats up on shore, left everything and followed him. Told you, this is a great fish story monumental it changed their lives forever when you read the gospels from this point on you realize that it started right here that moment that moment which is just a fish story but that moment changed everything it changed the world literally and we are reading what what peter wrote and the other apostles, we read them all the time. And that moment changed everything. So maybe God has a monumental moment uh, that's just about to happen in your life. My question is, what will you do? What will you do with that moment when the Lord is prompting you to act? What will you do? Will you cast your net into the lake and see what happens? Or will you say, ah, nah, I've been at this all day. I know what I'm doing. I'm one of the best fishermen in Galilee. So, nah, I'll just go home and call it a day. I hope that's not your response. And I hope it's not mine. So think about it. And I sure would love to hear some feedback from you. Anything you want to share with me, I'd love to hear it. I hope this fish story does something for you and your walk with Jesus. God bless you.